It's always been there. It's just not really been talked about. And I thought, wow, like uh, how nice it would be for these players to, and coaches, all these people have grown up in hockey and uh, just to be seen. And I think that's, that's really what we try to do in the documentary. Hi, Hubert. Hello, how are you? I'm doing fine in you. I'm good. Thank you so much for your time. A pleasure to talk to you and to meet you. I watched the documentary. It was it's it's a really really good. And what was like the inspiration and why did you decide to to talk about hockey and the the black players? Well, I, I think I was I was when I was first approached about it. I um, was told about the the Colored Hockey League of the Maritimes, and I was just surprised because I I didn't know the story at all. So I thought it was really um, interesting as a documentary filmmaker when you get into a story that you don't know and you're discovering it and then you get to share that with a bigger audience um so that's kind of where it started and then the idea of talking to current you know black players about their experiences that they were facing and had grown up facing and i thought oh it'd be interesting to have this kind of parallel between you know the past and and present day and kind of tie those two things together into, into one film did you have anything that most surprised you like on this this research on this discovery? <laughs> well, I guess one thing that I came across that I thought was really interesting is uh, the Colored Hockey League ran from 1895 to about, you know, the 1930s. But I asked someone um, on the East Coast, uh, you know, of Canada who has uh, researched this, you know, what happened with the league. And he, he was talking about the idea that that those players never stopped playing. So basically the black experience in hockey goes from the beginning of, of hockey all the way to now. Like there was never a time when there weren't um, the black experience in hockey. And I thought that was so interesting that actually it's always been there. It's just not really been talked about. And I thought, wow, like uh, how nice it would be for these players to, and coaches, all these people have grown up in hockey and uh, just to be seen. And I think that's that's really what we try to do in the documentary. Yeah, the, the cinematography is really beautiful. And, and you work like, how is your conversations with Chris? And some of the, the interviews, like the shots are like from, from, the, from the down up, which I really like it. And it's really, really beautiful. So how was the approach? Well, uh, yeah, my director of photography, Chris from Mikey and I have worked together for years and uh, so kind of developed a shorthand. But uh, yeah, a lot of the craft, you know, came to this idea of um, shooting the interviews in arenas and this idea of uh, um, isolation, right? Like they're in this space, this big space, and, you know, we're shooting in an anamorphic format. So you really feel them kind of isolated within that space, which is so much of their experience when they talk about what happens when you're the only black player on, on a team. Um, so that was kind of the aesthetic we were going for. And yet at the same time, we wanted to kind of show the, um, the beauty and the humanity of hockey itself and the playing. And so you kind of have a mixture of those two, two things, the kind of love for, uh, the emotion of it and how beautiful it is, how visual it is. And yet at the same time, this kind of feeling of being isolated within that. Uh, so kind of balancing those, those two things. Yeah, it's, it's really, really beautiful. I also noticed that you, you, you work with Felipe Telles on the, on the, on the music. I, I think he did the score of the music. How was like this collaboration with him? It was, yeah, it was, it was good. Um, you know, it was actually my first time working with him and, and he was so great. Um, you know, we were really working towards our deadline of uh, playing at the Toronto Film Festival. Um, so we were really working hard against that deadline. And again, it was trying to find a score that helped to uh, bring it all together. Um, that felt like, um, you know, although there was, you know, separate uh, elements to the score that it really helps to by the end to start to come together to build this theme um, which was the idea of community and how all the players uh, you know they they think that all their stories are um are separated but once they hear those stories they realize how connected that experience is um so we really wanted the music to um to reflect that and feel uh feel bigger, a little bit more uh, cinematic, I think, in that approach of, you know, if you go to the theater, you don't feel uh, 
let down <laughs> by the craft. Yeah. I think in documentary sometimes that happens. We're we're not thinking of it as a theatrical experience, but I, th I thought that was that was important. Yeah, it's really it's really really nice. Also, uh, uh, the documentary already won the People Choice Award, so congratulations on that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and also, uh, you have like LeBron James as the executive producer. How is that for you? Like he's the biggest one. <laughs> yeah, <basketball>. it was, <laughs> Yes, I know. That's that's it was, someone said. Oh well, he's not a hockey guy, but uh, you know, I think. I think you know his name on it, and also Drake, Drake's name on it as exact producers. It's it's so helpful, you know, especially for documentaries um, and independent documentaries like this, where you don't have you know the big stars and the movie stars. You have to find other ways uh, to try and get it, the stories out there. So I think when you have you know uh, big names and celebrities uh, like those on, it, re it really helps. It really helps to get the, the film known and seen and, and gain some traction. So we're, we're you know, so appreciative to, to have them uh, put their name on it. Yeah, but I think LeBron, when he's retired for basketball, he's going to go to their route or the filmmaking all this producing. Yeah, yeah. Well, they seem, yeah, that they definitely are, are uh, I think, you know, finding stories that have an impact and kind of align with what you um, want to see out in the world is, is so important. So I think when people use their platform in those ways to, as a spotlight, I think it's, uh, I love seeing that. I, I think that's always so great. Yeah. And, and are you already working your next uh, documentary or no? <laughs> I'm actually working on a, on a, a a feature, a scripted feature that we're shooting this fall. Um, so it's, yeah, first foray out of documentary into narrative. So excited for that the kind of next challenge. But uh, I always always will make documentaries because they're close to my heart. So I'll always come back uh, to that for sure. Uh, anything that you can share with us about this new project or you cannot talk about it? <laughs> I can't talk about it yet, but it's, um, you know, it, it, it will shoot this fall and it's, uh, it's called The Well. And yeah, we're just, yeah, still, still, still working, but it will, uh, it will be out uh, hopefully, uh, God, not next year, but the year after, I guess. Yeah. And if you have to give an advice to the young kids that wants to pursue a career in this, in this industry, what, or can be any industry, what advice you would give to them? I think the main thing is um, perseverance, you know, the idea to stick with things, even though um, when they gets challenging, I think that's always the, the biggest um, advice that I can give for young people is to, to push through uh, the difficult times and know that it won't be easy, but it tends to be the people who um, kind of have that perseverance who, who stick it out. So if I could boil it down to one thing, I would, I would say that. Amazing. Uh, Hubert, I just want to thank you so much for your time. A pleasure to meet you and a lot of success. And I cannot wait for your for your future film. <laughs> thank oh, thank you. you. I'll, have to, I'll have to reach out to you then. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I will talk about it. Okay, I appreciate thank you. Thank you. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, to like, and subscribe to our channel right here. <laughs>